Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful day as we give thanks for the beauty of creation, for an opportunity to gather here and online, to know again God's love for us and what it means to be the church. If you are visiting with us this morning, we particularly welcome you and hope this is a time of encouragement for you in your faith journey. There are welcome cards out on the table in the, in the uh, entryway. We invite you to fill out one of the cards. You can give it to me or one of the greeters so that we might be in touch with you and encourage you and let you know what's happening in the life of the church. We'll have refreshments after worship today out on the patio. So please plan to stay for that. This week coming up is Soul Song on Wednesday at 5.30, a time of contemplative worship and music in the chapel once a month on the first Wednesday. So we invite you to come and invite uh, friends to come. A reminder that our next special event planned by One World, One Spirit, our contemplative spirituality uh, ministry, is a morning with Vince Pizzuto. Uh, Pizzuto is an Episcopal priest. He is a professor at the Jesuit University in San Francisco. There are copies of a flyer out on the table with information, with details on the back, and information about registration. So I encourage you to think about coming the third Saturday in May here at the church. And uh, he's such a powerful, engaging, authentic voice uh, that has been helpful to me as I reflect on what he has written and said. So I hope you'll plan to come May 21st. Today is a day we are lifting up what it means to be the church and what it means to be a congregation here. Throughout the service, we'll be lifting up different aspects of what it means to be the church in the sermon, as we ordain and install elders and deacons to serve, as we commission those going to paradise this week to rebuild homes. So there are many ways to think about the church, but today I am reminded of how grateful I am that we are a congregation. And that part of our message is, if your soul is thirsty, there is living water here. And if you are hungry in body and spirit, All are welcome to this table. Come and be fed. Let us join in singing our first hymn called as Partners in Christ's Service. I'll have Patricia sing it, play it through once.
Our reading this morning is a statement of faith by the Presbyterian Church USA written in 1983. And as I read it, keep in mind that Cynthia's sermon today is celebrate being a church. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the Church. The same Spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles engages us through the word proclaimed, claims us in the water of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and calls women and men to all ministries of the church. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of people long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth.
to see you. So today, as you know, is communion. So you may go down to your class, and we'll see you a little later. It is our joy today, as the church, to install and ordain deacons. So Mike Stone, the clerk of session, and I are going to offer the liturgy, and in a moment we'll invite people forward. We read in the book of 1 Corinthians an image of what it means to be the church. There are a variety of gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same God who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purposes that are accomplished. To each is given a gift of the Spirit to be used for the common good. Together, we are the body of Christ and individually members of it. In the Presbyterian Church, we are called into the Church of Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling, to be disciples and servants of Christ who demonstrated servant leadership. Within the community of the church, some are called to particular service as deacons and elders. Teaching and ruling elders is the wording these days, elders and as ministers of word and sacrament. Ordination is Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us providing for ministries of caring and compassion in the world, ordering the governance of the church and preaching the word and administering the sacraments. Representing the one holy worldwide and apostolic church, the session of First Presbyterian Church of San Rafael ordains Mary Breeze to the office of deacon and installs her to active service on the board of deacons. We install to active service on the Board of Deacons in session those who have been previously ordained. Will the following come forward as you are named and stand with us facing us, please? Deacons, Laurel Stevenson, class of 2023. Class of 2024, Jenny Pabst, Sue Rastoni. Class of 2025, Mary Breeze. Elders, class of 2025, Ralph Purdy, Barbara Royal, Lorna Wirtz. We are grateful that all of you have answered the call to serve the church, and I now ask you the constitutional questions. Will you walk faithfully in the path of Jesus, acknowledging him head of the church, and through him believe in one God whose spirit pervades and whose glory is reflected in all creation? If so, please say, I will. I will. Will you listen for God's word in the ancient testimonies we call scripture and attend to God's present activity in the world? Will you be instructed by the confessions of the Reformed faith, which teach us that our faith must not only be reformed, but is always reforming as you lead the people of God? Will you fulfill your office in obedience to the love made known in Jesus Christ in Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? 
Will you in your own life seek to follow Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and wholesomeness of the church? If so, please say, I do. Will you seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? This question is for those coming on to the session, to Lorna and Ralph and Barbara. Lorna, Ralph, and Barbara. <laughs> Will each of you be faithful, ruling elders watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in the government and discipline serving and governing bodies of the church? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? To our deacons, to Mary, Sue, Jenny, and Laurel, will you be faithful deacons teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need. And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? I think that one of the important and wonderful parts of this service is the opportunity for the church, the mem all of us members, to share our gratitude and support for the people who are being new, new, newly thank you, ordained and installed. Do we, the members of the church, accept these friends in Christ as ruling elders and deacons, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead in the way of Jesus Christ? If so, will you say, we will? We will. Do you agree to encourage them to respect their decisions to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is the head of the church. If so, will you say, we will? We will. Part of being the church is when you are ordained as a pastor or elder or deacon, you are always a pastor, elder, and deacon. And today we have the joy of ordaining Mary Breeze. So Mary, I'd like you to come up closer and I'd like to invite all of you who are here to turn and face the congregation. And all those who have been ordained as elders, deacons, or pastors to please stand. And you may stay where you are, or you may come forward for the laying on of hands of Mary. If anyone would like to come forward, you can do that now, or you can stay where you are. And we'll... And I invite all of you to hold your hands out as we offer this prayer and blessing. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your steadfast, steadfast faithfulness to us. In every age, you have called forth leaders to serve you and equipped them with your gifts. Among your people, Israel, you anointed prophets, priests, and rulers. Through the history of the church, you have called pastors and teachers, bishops, elders, and deacons to build up your church. With Moses, the 70 elders bore the burdens of your people, ministering in the power of your spirit. Alongside the apostles, deacons cared for all in need and guarded the community's peace. In the church, deacons, elders, and pastors served together so that the whole people might be equipped for ministry and to build up the body of Christ the church. Today, we give special thanks for Mary Breeze as we ordain her for her ministry as a deacon. Guide her bless her. May she continue to show your love and compassion. 
We thank you for all of those who have heard the call, who are serving now and will be serving as deacons and elders. For your servants in every age, O oh God, and for the Church of Jesus Christ, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. You are elders and deacons of the Church, and for this the congregation is grateful. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will reflect this love and light. Let us give them a round of applause. You may be seated. I want to give special thanks at this time for those who have served as elders and deacons most recently and are now rotating off the board of deacons and elders. I'd like to invite those of you who are here to stand. Uh, Mary Pritchard was recognized at the 8.30 service. Lynn McDermott, John Hinman, and Mike Stone who has been a member of the session. Would you all please stand if you're here? And Chris Castle and Penn Mullen, who have been serving as deacons. Thank you very much for your service. In our polity, it is possible for uh, the clerk of session either to be a member of the session or not. Mike Stone graciously is uh, finishing his term as a member of the session, but is continuing this year as clerk. So thank you, Mike. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Ephesians in the New Testament. Some scholars question whether this book was written by Paul, who wrote many of the letters, the epistles. It's in that style, but it may have been one of the people that Paul was in his uh, circle. And although it is a letter to the church, to the newly formed community in the city of Ephesus, it is also a more general letter. The letter addresses what it means to be people who are diverse, who are following in the ways of Jesus, Jews and Gentiles, men and women, rich and poor. And part of the letter has to do with what does unity look like? in a newly formed faith community communities, and how do we live that out? So I am reading from Ephesians chapter 4, selected verses. I therefore beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and greatness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one God, one faith, one baptism, one God who is above all and through all, and in all. The gifts of Christ gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. Speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into the one who is the head into the Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together in every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Let us pause for a moment of prayer. O 
Holy One, we remember all kinds of churches that have existed, small communities of faith meeting in homes, magnificent churches, churches of every size, places where your word could be heard, where in silence and song, at table and in baptism, your love and grace could flow. Open us to what it means to be the church in this time and place. Amen. What is the church? What is our church? We could spend the next half hour or so just having that discussion, and we probably will have opportunities come going forward. How do we describe it? How is it different or the same from other churches? Or maybe we haven't been involved in a church before. Is the church this building? No. That is one important lesson we learned during the pandemic if we didn't know it well before. The building was closed starting in March 2020. We didn't gather for worship except online. We learned how to Zoom. We studied together. We shared memories together. We did all kinds of things, but we weren't in the building. But we are still the church. Is the church the budget of income and expenses? No. Budgets do reflect our priorities, our commitments, our responsibilities, our mission our ministry, but a budget and the money that comes in and goes out is not the church. We express our gratitude by giving. We celebrate the way God's Spirit is moving in our lives and our church and the world as we use this building, as we pay the staff, as we buy supplies. But the church is not the budget. Is our church a set of beliefs that everyone needs to agree to? No. As somebody said at the earlier service, well, good. <laughs> we are grounded in biblical stories in Reformed theology, in Celtic Christian spirituality, in the words of the prophets, old and new. We are part of the Christian Presbyterian household. But we are not bound by one set of beliefs that you need to agree to if you join the church, if you become a deacon or elder. There are some foundational questions that those making this commitment were asked. But there isn't one set of answers. We continue to discuss what it means to be welcoming and inclusive and how we learn deep truths from other spiritual traditions. So no, our church is not one set of beliefs that everyone agrees to. Is the church, our church, a body? Yes. You heard about it already as I led into the installation of deacons and elders. The questions asked of the deacons and elders are the same that are asked of pastors. 
of what it means to commit to share in the leadership of the body, the church. And to think about how foundational this image was to be the body, the living body of Christ. It's in 1 Corinthians, it's in Ephesians, in others. The church is a living body with each part doing its function and together we aren't all the same, we have different gifts, we are one body. Ephesians 4, in part, is about the kind of leaders which the church needs. People who are catalysts, people who invite both challenge and comfort and inspire the congregation as we move into new challenges and opportunities. Verses 11 through 13 give kind of a summary of one way to describe the kinds of leaders and people God calls and the gifts they're given. The gifts Christ gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. I'm not going to go into the Greek of each of those titles, but they're rich and interesting what those callings are. I want to get to the verb. What do they do? They describe the work. The writer of the letters, the text describes the work God calls those leaders to do. To equip the saints for the work of ministry. To build up the body of Christ to help people become more Christ-like. The word saints in our English has some connotations. What it means is the people, all the people, to equip all the people to do the ministry, the work of ministry. That word equip is so interesting. When we hear equipping, We might think of listening, teaching, training, supporting. But that word also has to do with healing. The word equip in our text comes from an interesting family of Greek words that describe, among other things, the setting of broken bones. Fostering healing, working for rehabilitation. To equip means to set right. And this same family of words makes an appearance in the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus is calling the Galilean fishermen to follow. When Jesus invited James and John to the adventure of discipleship, they were in a boat with their father mending their nets. That word mending is also part of this group of Greek words that's related to equipping. Mending, equipping to weave back together the frayed edges of life. That's part of what the leaders of the church are called to do. This understanding of equipping means that leadership involves the dimension of restoration and healing. And all of us have had experiences in our lives that rend and tear us. Times where fatigue and worry or fear make us feel like, I don't know if I can keep doing this. As a church, we need leaders who are able to help and encourage and lift up. And one of the other words I keep hearing these days of what is needed in the church, of churches, of leaders, of elders and deacons and pastors, is to be nimble. (laughs) 
not just going with the breezes, but there's a lot of change going on in the world. And if we are stuck, if we hold on to the only things we think that's always worked, I'm sure it'll keep working, it may not. So to be willing to be nimble, to listen, to discern together is also an important part of church leadership these days, to discern direction, to be willing to dream new dreams. So the church is a body, each part with different gifts, and the church has leaders who equip the body for shared life and health. I think I should have a little fun with parts of the body <laughs> as I think about what does each group have and need? Session members, elders. Well, I think they have ears for listening. I think they have a part of the brain that remembers who we have been and our history and our core values. And they have the eyes to look around, see where we are now, and look ahead. How are we going to get there? Where are we going? And they have hearts and minds to be open to the spirit. The session needs those, has those, and is those parts of the body. The deacons, who offer certainly a listening ear to people for support. They use their mouths. They are the mouth of the body to offer words of comfort and prayer. And deacons are the hands of the church. They bring meals. They bring flowers. And deacons might hold your hand if that's what you need. And deacons have hearts of compassion of caring. Today we're going to commission the PDA team as they go to rebuild more homes in paradise. So they are the hands and the feet of our church. They have hands and arms that are going to wield those hammers, are going to use those nail guns, are going to use those big saws, who are going to use measuring tape, hands and feet of our church this week. In the Presbyterian church, we function as a body all the time at every level of different gifts and skills. In the congregation, the session, the presbytery, the synod, the general assembly, elders and pastors, Ruling and teaching elders together make decisions, worship, study, pray. There is not one person directing it in our household. I grew up Presbyterian. I considered other denominations. One isn't better than the other, but for me, this model of shared leadership makes sense and is an expression of how we do God's work in the world. Healthy leadership in the church, I think, begins with friendship. I appreciate the people who serve on the session, who serve as deacons. We work together. I think healthy leaders can laugh at their mistakes, engage in ministry with trust and openness, not control, not power, not fear. That together we exemplify God's love through spiritual gifts. As a community of faith, we have assets. We have resources. One of my favorite writers, Eric Law, wrote a book called Holy Currencies. Holy Currencies, that's what we have more than money in the bank or in our investments. 
We as a church have currencies like relationships and friendships, leadership authority, truthfulness, time, a place, money. All of those are currencies that need to keep moving and flowing to do God's work in the world. All of those together create new opportunities to transform people in this congregation, in the community, with our partners. So the church is a body that works like that. I also think the church is a team. Your coaches are the session. The deacons are the medics, chaplains on the sidelines. Someone goes down. The deacons go. They're ready. Maybe cheerleaders when that's needed. We're a team, and I'd like to close with some wisdom about coaching and teamwork from the popular show, Ted Lasso. So, new slide. I don't know if you've discovered Ted Lasso. Jeffrey and I have just discovered this. A lot of reasons we weren't watching it, but it is available, and I kept hearing about it from other pastors. Ted Lasso stars Jason Sudeikis. It's a show about an American college football coach who gets hired to coach a British football soccer team. Ted is from the Midwest. He's got this kind of aw shucks demeanor. He doesn't know the first thing about coaching soccer. And he keeps asking his players that he's supposed to be coaching for clarification about vocabulary and strategies. In every situation, Ted is kind, constantly consistently kind. Despite lacking knowledge of the mechanics of soccer, Coach Lasso has a fundamental knowledge of the way people work. He observes the players and how they engage with each other and uses those nuggets of information to create a stronger, more unified team. He sees people for who they are at their core, and he sees and seeks the good in everyone. Everyone from the young man who brings the towels into the locker room that no one ever talks to. But Coach Lasso does, and he wants to know his name and get to know him. His star player on the team is phenomenal. But he doesn't seem to be participating with the whole team. And in one of the episodes, he talks to him, and he says, you are the most talented athlete I have ever coached. You are phenomenal out there. You are one in a million. But I think you have forgotten when you're out on the field that you are one of 11. And he doesn't say a lot more than that. But something starts to shift about being a team player. In another episode, Coach Lasso is challenged to a dart game by someone who everyone assumes will win. And this person has a big ego and has assumed some things about Ted Lasso. 
And during that game, Coach Lasso says some words that are important for a soccer team and for a church. He says, you know, you really should learn to be curious and not judgmental. Be curious. Be curious about each other. Learn more about each other. And don't be judgmental. Don't make assumptions. Don't go so quickly to criticism. We are members of a body as a church with many different gifts. We have amazing elders and deacons who are leading our team with courage and kindness. In our own lives, let's look for opportunities this week to be kind. Let's pray for our leaders as they seek to guide us and equip us. And let's continue to be a congregation that is open and curious. Amen. Thank you.
As a church, we give offerings. We share our time, our interests, our money. We may be very able to give very generously. We may not have much to give and everything in between. So we share in the work of the church and in bringing our offerings each Sunday, each month, throughout the year. So a reminder, there is an offering basket at the back. There's online options. Thank you for the ways you share your resources in the work we share together. It is a joy today to commission those who are going to be our hands and feet of the church as part of the PDA team. And I'd like to invite them to come forward and stand up here with me. Mary Lou Graham, Carlene McCart, Georgia Otterson, Diana Pellegrini, Ralph and Leslie Purdy, Barbara Royal, Cameron Royal, and Lorna Wirtz. Why don't you come all the way up here? How wonderful. Look at this amazing group. <laughs> um, illness is keeping a couple folks home who had hoped to be able to go, but we are grateful. All of you are going, uh, and some of the folks who weren't able to be here today. So nine people are going as part of the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance Team this spring. The group will be staying at Trinity Presbyterian Church in Oroville, and working in paradise that was decimated by the campfire in 2018. As we know, there are many ways to serve God. Each of us has been given gifts to use for the common good. We are called to love our neighbors. Will each of you, to the best of your ability, be part of this PDA team? Will you be open to listening and learning as you serve Will you come back and share your stories and pictures with us? If so, please say, I will. And do we, the congregation of First Presbyterian Church of San Rafael, promise to pray for our team? Do we celebrate that their prayerful and financial support that all of us together makes it possible for the team to be the hands and feet of Christ's love? Do you promise to learn from our team about their experiences? If so, please say, we do. We do. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Guiding and loving God, empower each person going on the trip this week to be your hands and feet. By their actions and words, Make them witnesses to your great love, your healing, your hope. Protect them and support them. We continue to pray for the people who are coming back to paradise, for whom that is their home. Fill our team with your spirit. Enable them to complete their tasks. Bring them safely home and then let their experiences further enrich us. Give this team your strength, your wisdom, your love as they serve. Amen. And I wish I was going. <laughs> but next time. Thank you. <laughs> As a community, we share in our joys and concerns. I uh, am aware that John Robinson is doing better. I see Marge and Dory here today. Uh, John was in the hospital. They have given him a pacemaker that is Bluetooth, and that made all the difference. He is now at Smith Ranch Rehab Center doing well, getting up and walking, doing PT and OT, and we hope maybe come home toward the end of the week or so. Is that right? But he would like visitors. 
John would appreciate visitors. I'm going to go today, so there aren't limits now. So he would really appreciate getting a chance to visit with his church friends. So at the Smith Ranch Road uh, Rehab Center, and uh, you can call ahead or you can go. So, good. Other joys and concerns to share today. Let us move now as we come to the table and as we gather there. And David needs that microphone. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. All who come to me shall not hunger, and all who believe in me shall not thirst. With Christians around the world and throughout the centuries, we gather around these symbols of bread and cup, simple elements that speak of nourishment and transformation. Christ welcomes and invites all to come to the table and be fed. Jesús dijo, yo soy el pan de vida, todos los que vengan a mí no tendrán hambre, y todos los que creen en mí no tendrán sed. Con los cristianos de todo el mundo y a lo largo de los siglos, nos reunimos alrededor de estos símbolos de pan y vino, elementos simples que hablan de nutrición y transformación, y Cristo nos invita a venir a la mesa y ser alimentados. God be with you. And also with you. Lift your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Go ahead. Oremos. Amado Dios, estamos agradecidos de que estés tan cerca de nosotros como nuestra respiración. Que tu amor es constante e infalible. Te agradecemos por todo lo que sostiene la vida y especialmente por Jesucristo. Te pedimos que bendigas este pan y esta copa a través de esta cena, recordando que somos el cuerpo de Cristo, que nos unamos a ti para promover el bienestar de toda la creación. Loving God, we are grateful that you are as close to us as our own breath, that your love is constant and unfailing. We thank you for all that sustains life, and especially for Jesus Christ. We lift up prayers that are on our hearts, prayers for an end to the war in Ukraine, Prayers for all those in our congregation who are in special need of your strength and healing and hope and comfort. We ask you to bless this bread and this cup. Through this meal, as we remember, we are the body of Christ. May we join with you in promoting the well-being of all creation. And now let us pray together as children of God in any way you feel called to pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, who art in heaven, heaven in cielo, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, and the glory. In the glory for the siglos de los siglos. Amen. Amen. When Jesus gathered with his friends, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and said, This is my life given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup and blessed it and said, this 
is the cup of love poured out for the reconciliation of the whole world. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. Cuando Jesús se reunió con sus seguidores, tomó el pan, dio gracias, lo partió y se lo dio, diciendo, esta es mi vida dada por ustedes, compartan esto en memoria de mí. Jesús también tomó la copa, diciendo, beban de esto, todos ustedes, esta es la copa de la salvación, ofrecida para la reconciliación del mundo entero, Comparte esto en memoria de mí. Estos son los dones de Dios y son para todo el pueblo de Dios. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. You are invited to come forward to take one of the non-gluten crackers, to take a cup of grape juice and take it back to your seat. When people have finished coming forward, if you would like us to bring the elements to you, please raise your hand. You are invited to the table. Están invitados a venir a la mesa. One who needs, excuse me, is there anyone who needs us to bring it to them?
We give thanks, loving God, that you have refreshed us at your table, strengthening our faith, increase our love for one another, unite us in the mystery of everlasting life. May we go out into the world to plant seeds of justice, transformation, and hope. Amen. Damos gracias a Dios que nos has refrescado en tu mesa, fortalecer nuestra fe, aumentar nuestro amor el uno por el otro. Únenos en el misterio de la vida eterna. Que podamos ir al mundo para plantar semillas de justicia, transformación y esperanza. Amén. Let us join in singing our final hymn, Come, Live in the Light, We Are Called. Please stay. this day assured of God's love for you. Go in that hope. Go in that peace. Remember, we are a body and a team. Amen.